Wasah, dudes. Welcome back to another video in the Fab 101 series. Today, we're gonna be talking about plate fitment and how things should be set up properly. This is something that I've noticed on YouTube quite a bit as well, is people aren't setting things up the way that they necessarily should be, and it affects your final product in the very end, whether it's the way that it looks visually or just strength-wise. I have a couple different joints I'm gonna be setting up here on the table as well as going over weld settings a little bit. And then I'll show you guys a couple different examples of the different joints that we used on the 92F1 build and just how things ended up looking in the very end. Uh, the main thing of this video is obviously the strength side of it, but the visual side of it is also a big factor as well, especially when you're spending this much time on a vehicle, whether it be an off-road truck or working on a car, whatever it may be. When you put this much time into something, you definitely want it to come out looking nice as well as being strong. And something as simple as setting up your plate work will make a huge difference in both those areas. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video and let's get started. I do already have a couple of things cut out and set up. The first one being the most common joint that I see here on YouTube when people are setting up plate work. They'll just kind of butt things up together like this and tack it in and then burn it together. The only issue and the reason I don't like this setup right here is you're not leaving any room for penetration so you'll have to turn your welder up really hot to be able to get this to burn in which will potentially warp whatever you're trying to make and let's say this is a shock mount you can't get to the back side so you all you're doing is just caking up a weld along here and just making it look really gross and it just doesn't come out looking right the only time that i would see this being okay in my opinion is if you'd weld this front side real quick and then put a nice bead along the back side and grind all this flush if you're going for like a seamless look. I'll show you guys on our shock mounts, I ended up doing something like this where it overhangs and I was able to get a nice weld in here which penetrates into both materials. You're not putting as much heat into it as you would with something like that. So I'll show you guys right now. Our rear shock mount is set up as like that kind of T-joint setup and I was able to get a weld all the way along the bottom side in here, all the way down to the tube and then it wraps around the tube. The reason I did it like this is because I wanted this top section to be a little bit wider to be able to land this tube that goes from the top of the bed cage down to right above the bypass mount. And that's just kind of spreading the load up through the cage work. And the only way I was able to land this tube on here without it being an issue was to widen this top part of the plate so that's the reason I did it like this. If I could do this over again with what I know now, I'd probably end up running a washers on the insides of these plates that the shock mount kind of goes up through. And then I'd widen all this out and have an outside corner joint here because I just think it will end up looking a lot better. But this ended up working perfectly fine, definitely strong enough, and it visually looks pretty good. So I'm happy with the way this came out. The other joint, that we'll be talking about is an outside corner joint. This will kind of be a shock mount setup that I will put together on camera and show you guys because there is a couple tips and tricks that I have for setting up outside corner joints. But the outside corner joint setup like this is what I think visually ends up looking the best and it's structurally a lot better too because you're not putting as much heat into the uh, product as you would be with like something like this. I'll show you guys how this ends up going together, but just as an example of what that looks like, this bump stop pad right here was all outside corner joints. And you can see that it just ends up coming out a whole lot better. With having a gap to fill inside of here, I think it just visually looks a whole lot better. So that is gonna be the most ideal way to set something up as far as like a shock mount or a bump stop pad or literally anything. I'm gonna get that shock mount set up right now and show you guys how that goes together and then we can start burning all this stuff up and you can see the differences between these three types of joints. I went ahead and got these shock mounts bolted together already. I used a inch and a half, a little bit over an inch and a half width spacer inside of these shock mounts. And the reason for that is you need to figure out what the width is of your misalignment spacers inside of your shock, whether it be a coilover or bypass or whatever you're trying to put inside of your shock mount. And then you wanna go a little bit over that, that width because when you tack all this stuff together and burn it together, it will, and you pull the spacer out, it will shrink a little bit as soon as you pull the spacer out. And you don't wanna have to either spread your shock mount back apart or grind the inside of the shock mount out to be able to get your shocks to fit right. So when you go just a tiny bit over the width of what your misalignment spacers actually are, it'll give you that little bit of spring back and then your shock will still slide into your shock mount perfectly. Another thing that I do is I'll put tack welds on the lips of the plate just like that and then sand everything nice and flat. 
And the reason for that is because when you go to put everything together for an outside corner joint, it'll kind of hold the plate up perfectly and give you the perfect outside corner joint. And you can go ahead and tack that together without having to sit there and try and hold the plate at the perfect angle to get it nice and straight with both pieces. And you can tack that together real easy and it just makes things a lot more simple. I went ahead and got two nice little tacks right there on the edges to hold that plate in place. Can flip this over and you can see I have two more tacks right here that'll help me get this top plate to sit right on here where it needs to sit and it gives me the perfect height. Another thing that I can kind of go over real quick is where to actually put tacks and how small you want to make them. You don't want to have some obnoxious big tack holding this stuff together unless it's really under a lot of stress. But if you're just going to be tacking stuff up like this, something that's not really structural, you want to put real small tacks on here, something that you can just go right over with your main weld when you go to burn everything together. And you want to kind of put things in corners instead of right in the center of a pass where you're going to be welding. So there you go. You can kind of get an idea of what I was talking about. Nice small little tacks right in corners. That way when you come in here to finally weld, you'll be able to wash right over the tack and keep going instead of having to stop at each big tack. If they were really massive, you'd see where the tack actually was because you come here and stop at the tack and then start here, go to here. It just doesn't end up looking as fluid as it should and you'll be able to just wash right over these tiny little tacks. So that's how you would set up an outside corner joint and we'll go ahead and start welding this stuff together. I'll probably start with this one right here, the most common and just kind of show you guys what that ends up looking like. I'll set the welder a little bit hotter than what I would normally set it to. So I would probably set it around 19.3 and we'll set this to about 290. One thing I don't think I mentioned already is I'm working with some 3 16 cold rolled on all this stuff. So all the material is exactly the same, but the settings will change for each type of joint just because you don't want to run the same settings that you would on something like this where it's just butted right up to itself compared to like a outside corner joint like that. I'm gonna start with this right now. I'll lay a bead across here and kind of show you guys what that looks like. And then we'll go through each one and you'll see the differences between them. So just having the plates butted up like that, there is quite a bit of heat going into all this stuff. It didn't come out looking too bad, but there's definitely not as much penetration as either of these setups right here. So what we'll do is we'll get this one burned in next and you'll see the difference on how the weld actually lays down inside of here and just kind of looks a lot more profiled. I'm gonna go ahead and do that kind of T-joint and I'm gonna bump the welder down quite a bit or a little bit to be able to do this one because it, there is quite a bit of a, a change in the way that the fit up is. I'll set volts to about 18 and a half and then the wire feed speed, I'm gonna bump down to 275. So we'll go ahead and burn this together right now and I'll show you guys the differences between the two. You can see the differences between the two right here. On the butted up pieces of plate, the weld is definitely a lot more caked up along here and it's just kind of sitting along the surface. Whereas on this right here, you're able to get way more penetration on both the plates and get them to fuse a little bit better. And you're able to get the weld to lay down a whole lot smoother and a lot flatter. And the good part about doing something like this is you're able to wash up on the upper plate and to the lower plate and just kind of work your way back and forth and get a lot better strength out of the weld compared to this where you're just welding basically the front edge of this plate and then down the side of this plate right here. This is definitely way more ideal between the two. So now we'll go ahead and go to an outside corner joint like this. I will drop these settings quite a bit to go to this outside corner joint. So I'll go down to about 17.3 and drop this wire feed speed down to about 240. You got, definitely got to take your time when you're doing any type of welding. You don't want to just burn through everything and just weld it all together at once. You want to let things cool, but you'll definitely notice that the weld looks a little bit different. There's not as much heat going into it, and it just overall ends up looking a whole lot better. So 
we got all three joints set up right here, all finished. I definitely didn't take the time and let things cool down like I said I was going to on the outside corner joint. I just kind of started and got ahead of myself and just finished it out just because I wanted to get it done. So there is a little bit more heat in this than I would have liked. Typically if I was going to be doing this on a vehicle and this was something that was going to actually be used, I would probably do this top part, let it completely cool, and then come back in here and do this bottom part. But because I am just filming a video and this is just more than likely going to end up getting thrown away, I just went ahead and burned everything up real quick just to kind of show you guys what all three of these joints would look like. So this is the butted up joint that we first did, the T joint, and then the outside corner joint. So this ended up coming out, as you can tell, way better than the other two. The weld can actually go somewhere, just gives it a nice seamless look all the way around and it just ends up coming out a whole lot better and you're penetrating into both the plates way more than both of these options right here. So between the three, if you have an option to do any of these, I would definitely pick an outside corner joint like this. This would be your next best bet and then this would just never happen. <laughs> so between these two, you should be perfectly fine with what you're doing. I just wanna say like I do in every other video, I am by no means a professional welder. Everything that I've been taught has been right here in this garage, just getting down and doing it. So with that being said, hopefully you guys learned something from this video as far as setting up your, your plate joints, uh, weld settings for certain different types of joints, how you need to set your welder up accordingly, as far as heat to be able to weld the joint as it is. And I know you guys have been asking about doing a TIG welding video. That will be coming up soon. Um, I just need to figure out how to get a mask on this camera to be able to show you guys the actual puddle while I'm welding. And then we can start going into weld techniques and what I actually do for MIG welding, TIG welding, all that stuff. So I know you guys have been asking for it. That is coming soon. But if you guys did like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Mm.